Oh boy. You've probably heard about a certain game causing head injuries. Oh my goodness. But in college, a sport with a higher rate of concussions isn't the one you're thinking of. And the athletes playing it probably aren't who you're imagining. In a 2015 NCAA survey, female hockey players reported concussions more often than male football players. And that's consistent with previous surveys, showing women's ice hockey on par with men's wrestling, football, and hockey. And the third oh! So, compared to other athletes, why do women playing hockey have such a high rate of concussion? So I was a full-time student at Harvard playing Division I hockey for my school team and leaving school for different stints. Pucci, flip shot, and a score! Josephine Third Pucci. goal of the year for Josephine Pucci. The morning of a couple gold medal games for the World Championships, I was submitting papers that had to be submitted for school and then would suit up in the USA jersey like that evening. Number 24, Josephine Pucci. In 2014, Josephine Pucci won a silver medal at the Sochi Winter Olympics, but she almost didn't make it. I got my concussion 10 months, 10 months before Olympic tryouts, and I remember just kind of being on my elbows, looking at the bench, and um, I was so close to, you know, hoping to reach my lifelong goal of hopefully competing in the Olympics, and then suddenly I was in a position where I wasn't even sure if I would be able to attend tryouts because of symptoms. After overcoming her injury to play Sochi, Pucci returned to school and decided to end her hockey career. Making that phone call that, you know, I'd be stepping away was the hardest, one of the hardest things I've ever done, but after I called and, um, you know, spoke with them at USA Hockey, it, it just felt so right. Compared to college sports like basketball or tennis, ice hockey is faster, played on harder surfaces, and involves more collisions, which explains part of why players are getting concussions. But the other part, why women, is less intuitive, because it isn't only hockey. In soccer, basketball, and other comparable men's sports, women have a higher rate of concussion. In fact, all the experts I talked to agreed that when men and women play the same sport, female athletes report a higher concussion rate than males. What experts can't agree on is why. Female athletes are more knowledgeable about signs and symptoms. For me, neck strength is a big component. We are a woman in his inner period. What's the style, level, of play? The differences between the structure of these nerve fibers. But there are some common factors researchers point to. A lot of people forget that this is also based upon reporting. Zachary Kerr authored the 2015 NCAA survey and now researches concussions at the University of North Carolina. So it may not be the fact that men are sustaining less concussions than women. Maybe women may have a better knowledge of concussions. Perhaps we as men are more stubborn with their health care. Uh, women are more likely to disclose the issues in general, and we're just seeing that uh, transferred over to the topic of concussions. Besides a willingness to report, social bias can still be a factor. It's not just about the individual, it's also about his or her interpersonal relationships with teammates, with their parents, with the coaches. So for men, the cultural, social, gender roles are that we can be aggressive, but for women, there's always that stereotype of them having to follow the gender role of being sugar, spice, and everything nice. A lot of times that's said in a sort of negative connotation type of way, as if women are weaker for reporting symptoms. And, you know, that's something that I just really disagree with. And I feel like if women are in fact reporting symptoms at a higher rate than men, then they should be applauded for that. You don't show how tough you are by playing through concussion symptoms. Another factor is style of play, because unlike the men's game, which allows checking, it isn't legal in women's hockey. When they're children, girls and boys play by the same rules. But when they turn into teenagers, boys are allowed to start checking. There's even a manual for it. That's the biggest difference between men and women is the checking, but when I played boys hockey, I played checking, and you know, I don't think I ever had a concussion playing boys hockey. By college, men learn to be on the lookout, which doesn't mean female players avoid contact, but they might focus on speed and skill instead of anticipating being hit on the ice. You know, every time I had the puck, I was ready to 
brace myself for a hit and you were forced to keep your head on a swivel. Whereas with the women, you're not supposed to be getting hit. I don't know if it necessarily falls on not being taught the right way, but I think par part of it is definitely not being instilled with this idea of constantly being prepared for body contact. Beyond sociocultural factors, researchers are asking whether the explanation could be biological. There's also the physiological aspects that need to be explored, things such as neck strength, hormones, the neurostructural aspects as well. So far, scientific answers aren't conclusive, but that shouldn't prevent change in the meantime. We can make changes now until the science catches up in regards to you know, what factors are really contributing to the vulnerabilities of you know, getting head injuries. In the NFL, advanced research, rule changes, and injury protocols through the concussion protocol only became possible once the league acknowledged data linking football to brain injuries. For female hockey players in college, there's a similar need for change. A lot of times I get the question, like, would you let your kids play ice hockey? And, you know, my answer may beat around the bush to a certain extent, but it's usually, well, I hope by the time I have kids that we'll know more. That's the end of this video, but there's a lot more I wish I could have covered here. So I'm going to be leaving some links below where you can find more information about the research that's being done, as well as resources for anyone that's interested in the topic. Thanks for watching.